All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we are going to get started. I think some other folks are gonna keep joining us. Um, but I know there's a lot going on first week of sessions, um, so we're going to dive in. Um, thanks for joining us. My name is Kelly Bate, and I'm Vice President of Reproductive Rights at State Innovation Exchange. Um, and we have um, some great legislators as part of our delegation to El Salvador um, uh, on the line and ready to talk a little bit about this experience and um, what it means for uh, their work and, and potentially your work as, as state legislators in this 2020 session. Um, as we prepare for what we expect will be another um, possibly record-breaking year when it comes to state abortion rights and reproductive rights policy. Um, so I'm, I'm so thrilled to uh, say hello to you all and especially thrilled to have um, at least some, well, hopefully all but um, TBD, <laughs> at least some of the five legislators who joined us um, back in November of 2019 for this delegation to El Salvador um, on abortion bans. So just a housekeeping note, um, we are recording this. Um, this, is, uh, this webinar is comprised of state legislators, legislative staff, and some um, national and state coalition partners who work on reproductive health rights and justice. Um, this is not open to the press, so um, there shouldn't be any members of the press on here, but if you are one, we kindly ask that you hang up. Uh, we will have other opportunities to continue promoting um, and pitching the story to various uh, members of the press and certainly many more conversations with our coalition partners um, about this experience and how it translates into the work that we do. So stay tuned for some of that. Um, there is a chat uh, feature function and a Q&A function. So Sophia Kirby and I will be um, trying to monitor that as this goes forward. We'll also have um, opportunities to open up the line um, so you can ask questions directly um, of the legislators uh, who participated and of course you'll be hearing from them as well. Um, and if I didn't mention that this is being recorded, let me do so again now. This is being recorded. So just a little bit of background. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, 2019 was a record-breaking year when it came to um, state abortion bans. And um, we had been having conversations with the uh, amazing folks at the Women's Equality Center who do um, a really incredible Latin American program working on um, uh, reproductive rights and, and other things in Latin America um, about some of the similarities between, or some of the lessons learned between um, uh, global abortion bans and what was happening in the United States. And from those conversations arose this idea that we could actually take a delegation of state legislators to El Salvador, which has one of the strictest uh, abortion laws in the world, um, and really um, experience firsthand what an abortion ban looks like on the ground. Um, as you can see here from the Scootmacher slide, of course, um, evidence of the record-breaking year around abortion bans that um, I've already mentioned. Um, and, and, you know, realizing as, especially as we look to 2020, that, uh, that, that conversation, that narrative would continue with the national election year. And of course now with the U S Supreme court poised to hear yet another abortion rights case coming out the state abortion restriction. Um, so we really wanted to bring this delegation of state legislators for this fact-finding mission to um, witness firsthand the horrors of criminalizing abortion, uh, the damage it does to women, families, and communities. Um, the context of what else is happening um, in, a, in a country when an abortion ban takes place and, and um, the commonalities between many things. Um, and, um, and then, you know, determining how we can take that experience and um, really share those lessons learned and uh, understandings to other legislators, allies, uh, media, colleagues, um, et cetera, around the U.S. who are also facing their own versions of abortion bans or hostile abortion climates. Um, so, uh, here are the incredible uh, group of legislators who came with us. Um, as you can see, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Arizona, Ohio, these are some of the, the states that are um, in the news a lot about um, because of the abortion policies being pushed or enacted in their states. Um, obviously, one of the huge stories of 2019 was Alabama's all-out abortion ban, um, but certainly uh, Georgia and Ohio were um, trying not to be outdone by that with their own uh, six-week abortion bans, um, and certainly Florida and Arizona have uh, long histories of being hostile to um, reproductive health rights and justice, and um, as we see in Florida already uh, for 2020, they have some abortion restrictions fast-tracked as well. 
Um, so these are the incredible legislators who came with us to El Salvador. Um, you'll hear from some of them in a moment, but I just wanted to um, again thank them all for taking several days out of their very busy lives with um, jobs and, and partners and young children and children of all ages and um, all of the things um, to actually come on this trip and, and just want to underscore how uh, meaningful that was for us and um, how grateful we are for their participation. Um, so again, just in terms of background, uh, why El Salvador? I mentioned the Women's Equality Center and the work that they do um, as part of their Latin American program, and, and Paula Avila Guillen is on the line, um, who leads that work there, um, and of course was the, the core partner in helping us make this happen. Um, uh, El Salvador, again, one of the strictest um, abortion laws in the world, um, and um, uh, you know, really a host of other challenges for women and girls in the country that, of course, are directly related to the, the fact that there is a strict abortion ban. Um, there are 15 women currently serving time in prison in El Salvador for um, uh, pregnancy outcomes um, that were beyond their control, usually charged with aggravated homicide there. Um, you'll hear about this visit, of course, but this photo is of the 13 women um, in one particular prison that we were able to visit. Um, and then you can see the, the legislator delegation standing in the background. Um, so you'll hear a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, our program and, and the intent of this visit was really to create um, a, a, an itinerary where we were able to meet with experts on the ground, um, legal experts, um, medical experts, activists, the people you know, actively working to try to change uh, El Salvador's abortion ban, um, political leaders, uh, and a whole host of folks who are, are really doing the work on the ground to try to um, uh, stop this, this bad law and um, free the women who are currently imprisoned. Um, so you can see here, we won't go through the full itinerary, but this was really about, um, again, contextualizing what an abortion ban means and how in a country and how it relates to other uh, policies and um, outcomes for, for women and girls uh, in, in a particular country. Um, so we really started with um, scene setting, meeting with people, hearing from their um, expertise, visiting community programs, a sex education community-based program site visit, um, a hospital maternity ward site visit, um, a, a, the sort of feminist activist home um, for activists in El Salvador, uh, and then culminating with the women's prison visit, and then finally with a, um, a visit to uh, the home that uh, houses women who have been freed, whose sentences have been commuted, um, to really, you know, talk to them and, and learn from them about their experience in um, uh, reintegrating back into society after an experience like that. So I'm going to pause and um, turn it over to um, the legislators that we have on the line um, to talk a little bit about their experiences. And if you don't mind, um, I'm just going to call on, uh, on you one at a time and, and uh, hope that you can speak for just a couple of minutes about um, your overall experience, um, but particularly your takeaways for um, how you do your work as a legislator on issues of reproductive health rights and justice. Um, so I'm going to start um, just with uh, by looking at the list in order um, with Arizona State Representative Raquel Tehran. So Representative Tehran, uh, if you could spend a couple minutes telling folks about your experience, that would be great. Well, thank you so much for having us, Kelly, and thank you to everybody who is on the line uh, and, and, and participating in this uh, briefing because it's going to be all hands on deck. We uh, went to El Salvador and I can tell you it was one of the most emotional uh, travels that I've had in my life. It definitely impacted, uh, impacted us from day one to the moment that, that we left. Uh, I, uh, we are all coming from states where abortion uh, restrictions are already on the books. Uh, here in particular in Arizona, um, the, if, if uh, Roe versus Wade is uh, gone, we would be in a blink of an eye, uh, El Salvador. Women would be criminalized anybody assisting a person who would like to have an abortion for whatever reason would also be criminalized. And frankly, uh, just being in a space 
where, uh, where when we talk about uh, women potentially being the, the, pre, the people that are going to suffer the harshest consequences, when we talk about the fact that, that poor women are gonna suffer the consequences and we got to see it firsthand in a jail cell was life changing. It's the reality that, that, it, that could happen uh, here in Arizona and in other states. Uh, there is, of course, a commitment to continue to amplify the need for reproductive health care and justice and making sure that we protect legal and, and, and safe abortion to the next level. Uh, we are not exaggerating. It's not a scare tactic. This is a, a reality. Uh, and uh, we Fortunately, we're able to also talk with a lot of people who are organizing because like in like everywhere, there's always going to be those people that are on the right side of history. And there is hope, of course, there is hope, number one, that women uh, who are have been incarcerated have already been liberated. Uh, but number two, that there are, they are moving the needle by sharing their stories and by really uh, creating alliances that, uh, that even brings in more conservative voices and bringing uh, these conversations to the forefront. Uh, just like we, like we saw that, uh, that uh, they're moving the needle over there in El Salvador, we need to do the same here in the United States. We cannot be silent and we need to be uh, stronger than ever. Uh, I, I just want to uh, end before uh, my other colleagues uh, get to uh, share their experience. It's just the, the, the mindfulness that the criminalization of abortion is really the separation of, of family. Uh, it, it really is uh, leaving children without their moms. It's uh, pre putting girls in prison for things that have happened to their pregnancies that are beyond their control. And uh, the poor women are the ones who suffer most. Thank you so much, Representative Tehran. Um, Georgia State Senator Nakima Williams, um, I would love for you to chime in and, and share perhaps your biggest takeaway as, as, it, as this visit relates to your work in Georgia. Um, and something you'd want your legislative colleagues in Georgia and around the country to, to know about um, the reality of banning abortion based on your experience. And bring home the very real experiences that I'm taking with me as I continue this fight here in Georgia. But um, just thinking through when I got ready to go to El Salvador and not really thinking, I, I worked in reproductive health and rights for 10 years as a VP of policy for Planned Parenthood. So often I get invited to things and I'm like, I'm really not going to learn anything. And I had to learn to be desensitized and take my feelings out of things because I didn't want to be overwhelmed by the work all the time. And so I, I, came to El Salvador not really anticipating it having the impact on me that it did have. So the one takeaway um, as it relates to my work in Georgia, um, thinking back through our fight that we had on a basically an abortion ban, a six-week ban in Georgia this spring, um, thinking through all of the, the things that we told our colleagues could happen if this bill were put into law, but thank goodness it's been enjoined. And so as of January 1st, um, our abortion ban did not go into effect, but um, without the courts, um, who knows where we would be. We could be in the same predicament that women in El Salvador and right here in Georgia in the United States, and that can happen anywhere in this country. And so for me, it was a way to look at all of the unintended consequences that we often speak about, that I stood in the well and said that if this bill passes, women could actually be in prison um, for having a miscarriage because who would know and who gets to decide um, what actually happened and like everything would be suspect and women would um, not be treated for ectopic pregnancies or women would be in hospitals and left basically to die unless there is someone willing to um, overlook an unjust law and give them the treatment and the care that they need. 
and thinking about women in rural places because we saw time and time again that the women in El Salvador that were um, most impacted by these unjust laws were women who lived um, in remote areas or women who were in rural areas and only had access to the public hospitals. And that is what we talk about so often here in the States, looking at women of color, looking at poor women, women who live in rural Georgia where um, we have 79 counties that don't have an OBGYN. So where will those be, where will those women be left to get care? Because we know that people who have means will still go to their, um, private physicians as women were doing in El Salvador. But I center all of the policymaking that I do, everything that I do as a legislator by centering those most marginalized. And that only, um, made this, that more profound for me by being in El Salvador and seeing how um, poor women were impacted by um, this abortion ban and actually seeing women in prison um, and relating it to the very conversations that I had to my colleagues saying that this could happen here. And they looked at me like I was crazy or thought that I was like the boy crying wolf and just exaggerating things. But this made it very real. And now I have stories and real people that I can sit and talk about Sarah's story and how um, she was a young girl afraid and preparing for um, the birth of her child and ended up um, and now she's serving jail time. And so like, I think people um, on the other side of this issue often think that we're just exaggerating and we're being extreme and saying what could happen, but it's not just our communities. It's not just our families. It's not just um, people that identify I'm a Democrat. I know this work is very much nonpartisan and I try to remind my colleagues all the time that it could happen to their constituents and their communities and it impacts all of us because we don't know um, any individual woman's circumstance. And so that's what I'm hopeful to be able to tell the stories of rural women who are dealing with um, the dire consequences of an abortion ban and making that very real for my colleagues. It's an election year in Georgia. And so while we passed um, one of the most restrictive abortion bans in the country, it's enjoined right now. We're hearing that some of our colleagues might try to take some of the things that were brought up in court to make um, a horrible bill a little less horrific, but still unconstitutional and still bad for women and bring it back up this session, but we'll be ready for the fight. Well, I'm always gonna speak up and stand out for what is fair and just. And I know that women deserve a full range of access to reproductive health care and to be able to make um, personal decisions about their bodies and their health care. And so I am committed to this work. I am committed to standing up and speaking out and making sure that no woman has to face what women in El Salvador are facing right now because it is very real and it could very much happen here in, in the United States. Thank you so much, Senator Williams. Um, Ohio Representative Stephanie House, I'm going to um, unmute your line and hopefully uh, you can chime in. Um, uh, same, same questions, if you could share a little bit about your takeaways and your experience and, and there's this sort of added um, element <laughs> for you uh, because literally while we were um, visiting these, these women in prison, um, there were things happening in Ohio. So um, tell us about that. Yeah, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just overall, it always puts you in a place um, coming back from El Salvador of understanding, um, first and foremost, of how blessed we all are to be here um, in America, in Ohio, even amongst many of some of these policies that we know that are harmful to people. Um, so that's one thing it's like to count my blessings. <laughs> um, the other thing is to realize that the way that we are able to operate having, you know, sense, uh, senses of freedom, we're always one election um, away from our reality being very different, right? So, um, because, these policies are enacted by people who the, the, the public decides should lead us. And so that is, it just, it really 
was that moment of like, this is very, very real. And so while we were going on the fact finding mission in, um, in El Salvador, here in Ohio, um, there were two legislators that um, put forth a total abortion ban, um, which was introduced here in Ohio, um, literally at the exact same time where um, when we were in Ohio. And so for me, that it, this just is like, people talk about ideas, but to see it in action is a totally different thing. And when you look upon who do these policies truly impact, who is criminalized, um, I always look for, and I know usually the face would be the women that I represent, right? What you will find is that those who are less connected, um, who don't have the resources, those are the people who will be criminalized. Those were the families that will be separated. You know, if this total abortion ban that my colleagues put forth comes to fruition, it's the people that I represent, right? We know because in our criminal justice system, it really, the severity goes upon people of color and poor people. And I represent the poorest district in this state. So it definitely, you know, rang an alarm for me is that I don't have the luxury um, to, to, you know, to just stay quiet or be tired because many times it's easy to get caught up of being in a minority status in the legislature to say, no one is gonna hear me. You know, I've said it all before, what I do know is the reality is I cannot stop talking. I cannot stop challenging on, on, on facts and reality and practice and what I've saw in El Salvador to stop pushing back and fighting against these harmful legislation that, only, that not only separate families, criminalize women, but ultimately lead to women's death. And so, you know, I, I just have to remain um, steadfast in my approach um, and being a voice for many times the people who really don't think they have a voice um, and helping others understand that we are connected and we cannot allow um, the, the, the ideology of a few be determined and, and be the law of the land for all, so. Thank you. Um, uh, Alabama, is Alabama State Representative Marika Coleman or Florida State Representative Cindy Polo on the line? Okay. Um, I, I thank you, um, Representative Tehran, Representative House, Senator Williams. Um, we'll come back to you in a second, but I wanted to actually turn to um, uh, Paula Avia Guillen from the Women's Equality Center, who uh, I mentioned was the, the key partner um, in this project um, and runs their Latin American initiatives. I, I want to turn it over to you and um, have you share a little bit about uh, the perspective of folks on the ground in El Salvador and what this visit from U.S. state legislators meant to them. Yes, thank you so much, um, Kelly. And it's uh, really so nice to hear all the different um, perspectives from the legislators. Um, I mean, it, I think it's, it's very difficult to, to put into words exactly what it meant, uh, but I will try to describe just uh, what it was the experience or what those feelings uh, up to even today, they had a call about the, uh, with the partners in El Salvador they are still receiving uh, um, press requests and they are still receiving other uh, uh, comments and, and, and feedback from other partners on the ground about how impactful this visit was and if it's possible to do another one. So it, that's just a summary of what it really meant. It meant that their country mattered. It meant that their issue mattered, that the eyes of the world, and especially of a country that has such a close connection to El Salvador that cities, the United States, was paying attention to them. What it meant for the women in prison is that their lives mattered. The, the people were caring about what was happening in El Salvador. So I think that, that the, the effects in the partners and in the organizations and, um, and in the women were very deeply and were, uh, and, and, and were extremely positive, but also in terms of the press outcomes that they are receiving. Like some of the 
uh, official visits that we had to like institutions as the hospital were reaching out to our partners. So our partners also felt that they were being recognized for their work as human rights defenders. And I think that that is, is something that, that was extremely significant and important for them. Um, so uh, we, look, we are looking forward to, to a lot more of these visits and, and also a lot more of these uh, uh, lessons um, learned, I think, from both sides. Thank you so much. Um, so to um, Senator Williams, Representative Tehran, Representative House, um, just a round robin again, are there any specific legislative or other actions that you plan, that you either have taken or, or plan on taking um, this session or this year uh, as either as a result of this experience or, or directly informed by this experience that you are able to share, um, uh, share out about on this, on this call? So this is representative house. Um, so one of the things that um, we, you know, I guess that, that, that was revealed to me um, or more of a eye opening is to see what happens to girls when we don't protect them. Um, you know, uh, you know, being in places where young girls um, were having baby, whether it's, really not of their choice um and it really has put me in a mind now of you know coming home um uh recently i've you know had just a, a lot of connection with um young ladies in our foster care system and to see you know looking in and having conversations of um with our young ladies who they're having babies with and many times they are men that are significantly older than them and it's just like we have to especially as a state um do a better job of protecting girls right so it's not necessarily law but having real conversations of what we can do to really begin to help the children that are truly in the state's care how do we protect them how are we helping them on in their re reproductive journey or for reproductive freedom, how are we helping them so that they won't, won't necessarily end up um, in cycles that cause them to get into the system to begin with? While it's not a direct correlation, it was something that pressed on my heart. You know, we were in a place where um, one of the, the, the community centers and, um, you know, when that young lady said, all she wants to, she just want to be somebody when she grow up. Like that just, it just shook me to my core. And it doesn't matter like where girls are in their world. I think that's every young girl's uh, goal. They wanna be somebody. And so when we have care of them, it is our duty and responsibility to help them be somebody. They already are somebody, but how can we eliminate those barriers and really push them and support them and protect them to truly be that vision where God placed them on this earth to do. So that was kind of one of the things that I'm committing myself to do um, because I know with our foster babies, they are ours and our girls in particular, we just really are not um, doing our job to protect them and support them. So that's one thing. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Representative Theran in Arizona. So we're starting our legislative session and um, we are really on uh, fight back mode. Of course, we uh, are not clear on uh, or unsure of the bills that will come um, that will come uh, to us this session. Uh, but definitely every single session we do introduce uh, repeals of the abortion restrictions that have come forth. And I will be uh, co-sponsoring uh, co-sponsoring those bills. And it allows us um, to continue to have the conversation about these restrictions. And uh, more so than ever, I, um, more so than ever right now, where we find ourselves um, uh, in a political climate in the United States where uh, unfortunately uh, even the courts are, are, are so diff are, are not necessarily in our favor. 
And uh, we need to make sure that we are continuing to uh, bring these restrictions to the forefront and that the, these do impact women, it impact families, and it, it impacts our community in general. But uh, one of the opportunities that I'm going to have this uh, session is to speak at the, on the floor uh, about uh, the experience uh, in El Salvador. <laughs> I uh, remind uh, my colleagues from both sides of the aisle that we are, uh, that we can be El Salvador in a blink of an eye. So um, we will be, um, hopefully I'll have some of my other colleagues joining me on the floor uh, in, in some type of, of uh, resolution to, uh, to, uh, to leave in writing the story of the women from El Salvador. <laughs> Thank you so much. Senator Williams, anything to add? Um, yeah, so next week, I am actually partnering with my local Planned Parenthood affiliate um, because we are um, trying to make sure that there are, like the bill that we passed this past session isn't brought back up. But my goal is to, until I can change the decision makers here um, that are joining me at the Capitol, is to empower our communities more to get more engaged and so that um, our citizens on the ground understand the impact of bills like this. And so I am partnering with the local affiliate next week and we're doing a community conversation um, and we are um, doing a follow-up event around Roses for Roe where we bring in, um, it's going to be a panel discussion and bringing in the, the community to hear more about my experience and to hear more about um, the impact of total abortion bans and why it's so important that um, that everyday people continue to speak up and speak out and get engaged in this conversation. And my other commitment is just looking at um, where we are in Georgia and what we faced um, and looking at other states across the, the country, especially some of my southern states that tend to try to outdo each other in the worst ways possible, is making sure that we are there for as a resource and connecting with them um, and my with my colleagues in other states so that if they are passing bans, oftentimes it's difficult to hear people that you're serving with on a daily basis. And it takes um, the outside agitator, and I'm willing to be that person, um, to come in and make sure that we are raising awareness about what total abortion bans really mean. So I, if there is anyone on this call and you see yourself facing an, an abortion ban, um, I am here. I want to be a partner. We're all in this together because if, if there's an abortion ban in one state, it's only a matter of time before they try to force it in our other states. So that's the other thing that I want to do. Make sure that we are looking at this holistically and we're there for each other. I love that. Thank you. Sadly, sadly, I forgot to mention, I know uh, Jamie and the NARAL Pro Choice Ohio folks are going to kill me if I didn't mention. I know, you know, as uh, Senator Williams indicated, you know, doing, you know, outreach work um, with Planned Parenthood. Um, that is uh, um, the idea. And we're kind of, you know, in the planning stages of doing work, you know, to lift up, do the highlights of what happened in the trip and how we can get more people involved, um, you know, beyond some of kind of the normal people that we will find. Um, when we talk about reproductive freedom. So I would be remiss if I did not mention that. Um, so for those people who may have, may have some interest, uh, stay tuned with that. Fabulous, thank you. And I, yeah, I love that. And, and um, uh, you know, Senator Williams was part of a, a different delegation we did last year of um, legislators that we brought to Springfield, Illinois while they were um, considering their proactive abortion rights protection legislation and, um, and this kind of cross-state information sharing, experience sharing, demonstrating the urgency, demonstrating the, um, as Senator Williams, as you said, the, you know, an, an abortion ban in one state, um, the impact is not just limited to that state's borders, right? And so um, we, we uh, will continue to do that kind of cross-state information sharing and, and networking. And um, uh, I think that's a fabulous idea around the El Salvador delegation as well. And so, um, yes, for legislators or legislative staff uh, on other states who are on the line, Line, um, if and as you have uh, big abortion restrictions or pending um, abortion bills happening, and that's something that would interest you, please, please just reach out, um, and we would love to help make that happen. Um, I am going to um, 
Uh, in the meantime, if, if folks have questions, I think you can use the Q&A or the chat feature function um, if you have questions for any of the specific legislators or for Pella. But in the meantime, I'm going to invite um, Sophia Kirby, SIX's Director of Reproductive Rights, to um, share some more concrete takeaways that we um, have from this, from this delegation. So, Sophia. Great, thank you, Kelly. Um, for those who haven't had the opportunity to meet me yet, again, my name is Sophia Kirby. I'm the Director of Reproductive Rights at SIX. Thank you so much for joining us in this important webinar to hear a little bit more about our legislators' experience in El Salvador. So I, I just wanna take a moment to really uplift um, some issues that all of our legislators have kind of already talked about, but wanting to, wanting to underscore. We recognize that the criminalization of abortion is, is something that's detrimental to our families, to our communities, and I think something that we often forget that we saw firsthand in El Salvador, but also is very apparent in the U.S., is that the vast majority of people who are looking to seek abortion care are already parents. They already have children, they already are caregivers, they already are people who are leading their families um, and caring for our communities. And so when we have this full criminalization of abortion or really any abortion restriction that tears away that structure, that tears away that family unit, um, that really impacts the ability for our families to thrive and inherently for our communities to thrive. Um, and so going off of that, we also recognize that the abortion restrictions and bans that we're seeing heavily in 2019, but definitely, definitely not new, particularly to the states that are represented on this webinar, is that it's an interconnected issue, right? So I think one thing that everyone can, can agree on or believe in is that there is a hope and a value around us being able to determine the best way to live our lives, and that includes determining the best way to um, to the best time to bring our families into this world, the best time to really plan our futures. Um, and that is not just something that is, is indicative of our ability to access abortion care, right? That's the ability for us to being able to really go for that job that we want, our ability to finish school or, or go after um, a higher degree or thinking about some of the economic opportunities and access to healthcare that really put us in a bind when we have such extreme restrictions on our bodies and our ability to um, our ability to plan our families. And those interconnected issues are extremely, extremely exacerbated when there's a full out criminalization of abortion. And lastly, it's something that every single legislator on this call brought up is that when we have these extreme restrictions, um, it's harmful to everyone. Yes, it's harmful to all Every, I, I promise you there is a constituent within your district, within your community who would be harmed by this, but particularly the harm is felt on those who are already um, doing what they can to manage because they're either low income or they're in rural areas and so don't have as much access to resources and services as other folks do. And so the reality is that when we have these extreme criminalization of abortion that have these long-term impacting effects in our communities, that it's those who are poor, it's those who are low income, who already are juggling so many things, who are the harshest um, impacted, by, impacted by this issue. And I love Representative Stephanie Howe's comment from Ohio saying, you know, you represent the poorest country in your state. You don't have an option but to really focus on these issues and think about the way it impacts your constituents and your communities. And I, and, um, I also would say that for, for other legislators or staff on the call or uh, partners, regardless of the socioeconomic breakdown of your districts or the communities that you're working and advocating for, there is some family, there is some neighborhood who is particularly impacted based on their lack of resources and access to jobs and healthy and healthy access to healthcare. So I just want to uplift those, those pieces, but um, I'll take a moment to see if there are any questions that folks have. I don't see any in the chat box, but um, if folks on the call or on, on the phone would like to, we're able to um, mute your line for a moment. Okay, it looks like there are no additional questions. So I think with that, we will wrap up. I do, I think we do want to give a couple of thank yous before. Um, 
So first off, thank you to our wonderful state representative, state legislators who were on this call. Uh, particularly, thank you, Representative Howes, Representative Charon, Senator Williams, and to our two legislators who could not make the webinar today, Representative Coleman um, from Alabama, Representative Polo from Florida. Particularly want to thank our amazing partner, uh, Paula at Women's Equality Center. There is absolutely no way that we could have done this uh, legislature delegation without you. We are particularly um, grateful to the partners and activists on the ground in El Salvador. Um, and lastly, I think I, I, we want to uplift the fact that there are still 13 women who are currently, uh, or 15 rather, who are currently in prison, 13 who were able to share their personal stories with us and personal stories that I know that we're continuing to carry with us throughout our activism and our work. Um, so I guess I'll give a couple of more minutes to see if there are any lingering questions before we wrap up. Um, I did want to add, Sophia, too, just so folks know, um, we were able to have, um, uh, well, we invited and they, they came and, uh, you know, did their own thing as they would, but CBS News um, came to El Salvador and covered some of this visit. Um, we don't have an exact air date yet, but they, uh, hopefully it will be this month and um, it's a, it looks like it's going to be a broader story on, on um, El Salvador's abortion context and climate um, and will include some um, some information about um, about this visit and I know um, Alabama State Representative Marika Coleman um, is hopefully part of that story as well really trying to drive home again that commonality and the similarities between um, what Alabama lawmakers you know are, are trying to do here versus what uh, an abortion ban looks like in El Salvador. So um, stay tuned for that. We'll definitely tweet out that air date um, and the recording um, of what they of what they show once that's available as well. So thank you all. You know, um, uh, uh, thank you all for for joining. Thanks again to the legislators, um, not only for coming um, and for the amazing work you do, but for for being so generous as to share some of your uh, reactions and feedback and takeaways um, with this broader group. We'll be sharing this uh, recording link with the rest of the Six Legislator Network, and um, uh, hope that more folks can continue to benefit from it. Um, and again, for the rest of you in other states, if there are um, uh, ideas or, or other information you need about this experience and how it might relate to um, your state's work on abortion um, policies, please reach out and we would love to help you anytime. If you're a legislator or legislative staff and you are not yet a member of the Reproductive Freedom Leadership Council, um, you can go to bit.ly slash six repro um, and sign up there uh, or reach out anytime. Thank you all. Have a great day, everyone.